The Earl returned to the walking party with the tragic news. A search party was immediately set up, but of course, no body was found. The young woman, feeling drawn to the tour, could feel the pull of it within her veins, like a natal homing ability, walked back towards the estuary, and from there followed the tour up river, until she came to a fine house where she asked and gained employment. She worked hard and she very quickly progressed to being cook. Months later, the Earl, his brother and his son came calling at this fine house and an evening meal was prepared in their honour. That morning, a prize salmon had been caught and brought to the house. The young woman, being a child of field and river, knew exactly which wild herbs to use to bring out the subtle flavour of the salmon. As she prepared the fish, she slit open its belly and its guts came tumbling out. There in amongst them, something glinted, something gold, something round. Breathe in, breathe out. The meal was a huge success. Let me meet the cook, demanded the Earl. And so the young woman was called for. She entered the dining room and a round of applause rippled around the table. She made eye contact with the Earl, who sat there, jaw clenched, boiled lobster red. The young woman held up her hands as though to ask the applause to stop. And the candlelight bounced off the band of gold she held between her thumb and her forefinger and sent it dancing around the room. The river that had gifted her herself had gifted her again. And there she stood, holding the ring, a circle of gold. Not so much zero chance, more a oh of surprise. The Earl hung his head in shame bowed his head to fate and declared to those present that this woman was his son's wife. This woman was his son's true love. The young woman smiled and she flicked the ring up into the air and as it flew, it turned back on itself, getting higher and higher. And as it flew, it seemed to get larger and larger. First the size of a bracelet, then the size of a hangman's noose, then a lasso, and then the moon hanging in the night sky. And when it landed back on her palm, it was just a ring again. The Earl invited her to take her rightful place between him and his son. And in the original story, that's what the young woman did. She accepted that offer, but these are different times. The river demands a different ending. The consequences of our actions circle back around and meet us head on. There is no escape. What we try to make disappear, flush away, always, comes back, bubbling up, stinking of sewage and rotten fallibility and our self-centred righteousness. The young woman has a choice. Unlike the river, she has dominion. Should she go and sit next to the Earl's son? Or should she sit at the other end of the table and invite the Earl's son to sit next to her? Or should she take that ring and slip it into her pocket and use it to buy a one-way ticket to somewhere else? Breathe in. And I'll let you decide when to breathe out.